Welcome to the Eternal ROI Podcast. My name is Chris Patton. I'm the global CEO of His Way at Work. And today I've got an incredible guest, someone that you're really going to learn quite a bit from, you're going to love listening to, uh, a friend of mine personally, as well as somebody we've worked with. His name is Brad Thompson. And Brad is retired today, but he's the former CEO of Columbia Forest Products. Brad, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Chris, for that kind uh, introduction. Well, it is uh, it is truly my pleasure to have you on the show. I've heard you speak a number of times. We've had conversations. We've done work with your organization back in your mm-hmm. former life. And uh, while I really would love to hear quite a bit about uh, what you're doing in retirement, which is mm-hmm. probably quite a bit, not uh, – just sitting around if I know you too well. Um, I'd also, I'd like to hear a a touch on that, but really would like to go back to what makes up Brad Thompson? Who are you? Why should the people that are listening right now even care? Why should they listen to you? And and, uh, while I know you're humble, I want you to really share with them who you are. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'll do my, do my best, uh, Chris. Uh, Well, again, I'm uh, Brad Thompson and I, uh, retired a few years ago from a company called Columbia Force Products in uh, the end of 2018. I uh, refer to myself as pre-COVID, so <laughs> I didn't have to experience much as, uh, of that world as uh, many of the listeners uh, uh, have. However, I, I did have some time through the Great Recession and uh, spent my career, I'll go way back, Chris, I started Please. in the Force forest products industry back in, uh, I think I looked at, I'm beginning to look at my uh, social security statement. I began working in 1973, but started focusing in the forest products industry in 1978. And so um, I uh, went to school, had a degree in forestry and later uh, received my master's in business and uh, went to work from, uh, for some very large uh, forest products corporations. My wife and I, we have three children. We, we moved around the United States mm. uh, a number of places. And uh, back in 1992, and then we'll fast forward, um, I went to work for a company called uh, Columbia Forest Products. And uh, my wife and I moved uh, from Wisconsin uh, to a place we said we would never move to. <laughs> and so that's the first lesson I learned in life. Never, uh, never uh, grasp onto things or tell the mm. Lord what your plans are because all he does is laugh at those that's plans. Right. And so anyway, we, we moved to Virginia with my family and I, I managed uh, some facilities for the, for the company. And, you know, my spiritual life at that time, if, if it's a good time to talk about that, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, I was raised in the Christian church, but I, uh, I, I wouldn't consider, I was not a Christian, had not given my life to the Lord. And so I was consumed with uh, trying to climb the corporate ladder and mm. uh, I had uh, made some progress at that, but uh it was in 1994, Chris, 95, that time frame that, uh, to give you an idea, you know, I would drive my, my wife and kids to church on Sunday, and then I'd go to the office, and I'd mm. pick them back up. Uh, and it wasn't for, a, for, a, for the grace of God. Uh, a, a couple of men at that church began to notice Brad's uh, uh, habit, and mm. uh, they pursued me. And to make that story uh, short, uh, I uh, finally decided to go on a Promise Keepers event with them. And I think it was 95, 96 time frame in Charlotte, mm-hmm. North Carolina. And uh, I became a new man. I gave my life to the Lord and uh, wow. realized my pursuits uh, of climbing the corporate ladder uh, really uh, wasn't going to provide, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, the eternal value right. that, that, I, that I was seeking. And, uh, and so from there, I, uh, you know, I was on fire. And um, I'll fast forward a little bit. It, it got to the point where I was thinking about leaving the business world. 
and uh, going into the mission field, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, like many stories, uh, the Lord had other ideas, and uh, through my wife and other men who came beside me, said, "Brad, you know, perhaps a mission field place, the business world." And so uh, I began to think about that because, you know, I was your, uh, 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 an example of um, uh, an undercover Christian. Sure. I'd go to church on Sunday and enjoyed it and was involved in the church, but I compartmentalized my life in a way that you, you never brought any of that to the That's workplace. Right. That is so, so common. And so I began to, the Lord began to, to work on me. And uh, I think it was in the early part of uh, just past uh, two, 2000, just after 9-11. In fact, I was, uh, I recall this vividly, uh, I was with the Gideons on a Bible blitz scheduled for 9-14, three days after 9-11. Uh -huh. So myself and a group of men were there ministering to the people of New York City and Rikers Island. And mm -hmm. I came back re refreshed and uh, began thinking about ministry. And I, and I, I started simply in a, in, a, in a way that began to express my faith in the workplace. And it was very simple things, but um, I started with uh, uh, scripture references during management presentations that would okay. uh, raise eyebrows, and uh, but then it began to grow, and I can talk about that, but maybe I should be quiet for a few minutes and, and let, uh, <laughs> no, let you speak. No, <laughs> you, you've done a tremendous job of setting the stage, Brad, and, and you know, I go back, so many people that, that I talk to, business owners or business leaders in general, have been down a path similar to yours, or they're on that path right now, and they're thinking, you know, the way I used to describe it was a Dixie plate. So, you know, the Dixie plate yeah. with the compartments, well, where you have the huge section on that plate where you put your dessert, that's where I had my work, and that's where a lot of people have their employment, their work, their identity is in that, and then the smaller but medium-sized section where the entree goes, that's where they put family. And the little vegetable section is where they put God. And it's everything <laughs> that's is right. compartmentalized. Nothing touches. And there was a right. point in time I went through the same thing and, and thought, I've got to realign those compartments in my life and give God a bigger share. And then I realized he didn't want a bigger share. He wanted the whole plate. That's and it right. was his yeah. plate. Right? right, and I talk yeah. to so many business people that think the same way. It is it, it is our world that says business does not mix with politics or religion or or even SEC football, depending on where you live. Right, right? and right. you're not uncommon in that. But what was it? Is there anything in particular that made you realize <laughs> that compartmentalizing is not where God wants you to be? Well, y yes, I think God calls us uh, th uh, through the Great Commission not mm -hmm. to just do that on Sunday. And uh, I think yes. that uh, the revelation of people and understanding their needs, um, it became clear to me that uh, uh, pe people had this thought of eternity in them and that the business place uh, in many cases, I think, I don't know what the statistics are, I'm sure they're worse when I uh, now than they were, but you know, mm. 60 to 70 percent of the people coming to uh, Columbia Forest Products, you know, weren't churched. That's and right. so if they if they weren't going to hear the gospel or, or uh, see uh, the, the, the love of Christ in the workplace, they wouldn't. They'd never see it. That's right. And you know, I, I firmly believe that people are. Uh, are uh, questioning a number of things in their lives. You know, uh, where did I come from? What's my purpose? Uh, yes. How should I live and where am I going? Those yeah. four questions, uh, uh, Chris, are paramount. And um, so um, I, I just had no, no other choice. There was no moment it was just it's the right thing to do yeah and yeah so, i get it i get it yeah so so in that 
beginning, you said you were doing some very simple things, some something, yeah. some things were fairly subtle, but others that maybe, have, as you said, raised some eyebrows. At some yeah. point, and I think it was in 2016 or 17, that yeah. you engaged His Way at Work, right? What were yes. some things that led to that or some dis- some drivers in that decision that you made to engage His Way at Work? Oh, yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, I became involved with C12 back in 2005. Ma- many people may mm-hmm. not know what that organization is, but uh, it's a business, a Christian business owners and uh, uh, CEOs. And um, so if I just reach back just a few years from that, uh, Chris, we mm-hmm. began, um, now I should say something about Columbia Force products, and, and this, it's, it's not a small company. I mean, right. our sales uh, range from $600 million to $1.2 billion when I was the uh, wow. uh, CEO of the company. And um, I didn't, uh, not a Christian company, and before I became the CEO, um, I was beginning to... Um, uh, work on workplace ministry, developing a strategic plan for ministry. And that raised a lot of eyebrows and I got a mm. lot of pushback from corporate offices. But let me move forward a bit. Uh, it it came to the realization, if you're going to be intentional ab- about workplace ministry, you, you certainly have to pay attention to the economic value added of the company. How does it sure. provide economics? It's got to be successful. Otherwise you know, with, it doesn't without, keep going. Yeah. With, with, with <laughs> without a net profit, there is no, uh, there is no workplace ministry. So right. EVA economic value added is important, uh, but also the spiritual value added. And, and that gets to the people that work in the workplace. And it, we came to the conclusion that, uh, well, myself and the men that worked with me, uh, that we could provide a, a people seek eternal value. And they do that in two ways, I think. One is through company mission. I mean, it's got to ring with them. Sure. And second, and, and second, they need to find, they need, need to have a, a sense of worth or personal value uh, or some way that they mm. uh, have, uh, they can, that, um, they can satisfy, you know, what is my, my purpose. And so uh, those those two areas through, um, through company purpose and spiritual value added or providing a means for people to find eternal value or significance, as I called it in the workplace, you know, and God clearly speaks to us. And I think which brought us to say at work, I saw Peter from Polydeck make a, a, a presentation, I think sure. the, the founder of his way of work. Mm-hmm. Early on, back in two, this is going on ten years ago, I think. Sure. And um, and he gave a compelling uh, presentation about uh, about what 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 are the most important commandments, as we find in Matthew. You know, is is love the Lord your God, and the second as important is uh, love your neighbor. Right. And the idea was, is how do you, how do you love your neighbor and who is your neighbor? And it's the people you work with every day. Right. So we started that relationship with his way at work. I think and it was early, earlier on in the, in the, uh, in the, I think the, the organization's, um, yes. Uh, yes. Start. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you looked at his way at work and you saw what we offered, what was it about right. that that was interesting to you and, and that you saw as a match yeah. with CFP? Right. Well, so th- that's a great question because when I first uh, talked with uh, Peter about this, you know, um, you know, I think there needed to be some things in place. And he, w- uh, I think there was some uh, uh, initial feeling out of one another and h- how far mm-hmm. do you want to take this, Brad? Because it takes... Uh, you can't be a coward when you start doing these things. It <laughs> it's takes, all in, right? It, it, it's all in. And uh, I think uh, after discussions with Peter and us visiting um, uh, Polydeck down in South Carolina and then talking to others that were in process of implementing his way at work, uh, I, I got familiar with the process. And that was this idea of company purpose which is important. I mean, if you were to look at our mission statement back then, Chris, you know, 
our people couldn't remember it, and I had to read it every three or four <laughs> days so I could remember it. <laughs> so I think, you know, we had a, a base of caring already. Uh, we had uh, widespread use of corporate chaplains in uh, 15 of our facilities across North America. So it, it appeared that we were staged correctly to go to the next, next step, and that's to get people involved, and that's what we did. We, uh, mm -hmm. What I uh, admired about his way at work is they started right, right at the base uh, of where you should start, and that is, let's look at your company purpose. And does that really uh, reflect, uh, in, in my own words, does that reflect a caring company? Right. It, ours didn't, and we changed it, and uh, that was the first step. And then we began working, and, and, and when I say that, Chris, it, it wasn't uh, wasn't me coming up now with the company oh, purpose or mission it. statement. It was we, we selected a group of people around the company, uh, from the people that uh, run a press in one of our facilities to mm. a plant manager, and th they came back with a very poignant, easy to understand uh, mission and purpose. And uh, from there, we began uh, introducing. Uh, uh, his way at work, which then evolved into uh, something even much larger in terms of uh, caring. And sure. I'll, I'll share a statistic with you here when, Please. Uh, when the time is right. Yeah. So I hope that's not too early. Yeah, but, no, that, uh, that helps. So so let's fast forward. You you in, implemented the system, the operating system is yes. what we call it today. Yes. And, and you've right. got the caring team, you've got the, the, uh, the setup. So Fast forward a couple of years, um, and it's really getting close to your retirement. But as at that point, how would you measure the effectiveness of his way of work in Columbia Forest products? And keyword there that I'm looking there at is measure, because this is in many cases we talk to business owners and they say, "Well, we're doing some things," but when we say, "Well, how do you track that? How do you measure the effectiveness?" We get blank stares because, well, this is ministry, so you can't really measure ministry, can you? You can't measure oh, yes. caring, yeah. but I think that's <laughs> right. not necessarily the case. And if anybody's measuring it, it's you guys. So tell me how you guys if yes. you measure that effect. Well, we and that's really evolved over um, the years now. I mean, we have a uh, an information system that each plant has a scorecard for the caring activities that are going on in the facility in it. And I'd invite your audience. I can, we can give contacts, uh, contacts to, to Columbia forest products to see how all of that's done. But what, what happened was, is, um, as we implemented caring committees, we had people just, um, first of all, um, one of the things that, uh, we implemented is, uh, we allowed the, and I, I should back way back up for a moment here. It's important to know our company uh, was an, is an ESOP, so it's employee-owned. Right. And so that ESOP, uh, I felt that it important uh, that if we were going to care for the community, care for our employees, that the people that own the company should make those decisions. Absolutely. So, uh, and so we implemented these caring committees across uh, all of our facilities. In fact, I went or by conference uh, started uh, and I introduced and welcomed the team that was put together. And um, so the metrics, um, so there's, there's a number of them. So I'll go to, first of all, in terms of working climate and surveys, Columbia made uh, uh, every a couple of years, not every year, we did a working climate uh, survey. And in fact, uh, one of the instruments that His Way at Work uses uh, it is an instrument to measure, you know, do we have a caring culture? And so first thing was, as we saw those scores grow dramatically, uh, that, that's the first thing. The second thing um, is we saw our turnover. We had among uh, our turnover begin to go down, which in a, I, I think today, if you were going to ask many business owners, what's their biggest worry is who exactly. are we going to hire? That's right. And so if, if you can get to people and give them uh, a significance and eternal value, 
you know, let me state it this way. Columbia Force products, we made hardwood plywood. And that's not the most glamorous job in the world, <laughs> and it's hard work. Yeah. And so it may not bounce them out, people out of bed every day to come in and work at a hot press or to do accounting. Right. But what they can find significance in and what can bounce them out of bed every day is caring for the employees uh, that they work with and care uh, for the communities in which they they live. And so uh, turnover was the other improvement in statistics. And, you know, I don't, you know, it's hard to say this did that, mm -hmm. but from this period of time, uh, uh, our stock price grew 70, uh, I think if I were running the math quickly in my head, about 75%. Wow. Now, let one me, other, let me ask, one let me, other, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I want to hear this other. One, yeah. One other uh, side. And I think I mentioned to, this to you. Uh, I did some, after I retired, uh, I, I looked at, uh, uh, when I retired, uh, we, I, uh, we had uh, a measure that we, uh, through corporate chaplains, determine uh, how many people have uh, given their life to the Lord? And a mm -hmm. company of about 2,000 people, we had some 350 employees give their uh, make a, a profession of Christ. Wow. After the implementation, uh, and, and I did the, the statistics, and that was over about an eight year period of time. But then I looked at the years since implementing His Way at Work, and the rate in which people were coming to the Lord uh, more than doubled during that period of time from 216 to 219. That so is fantastic. I, I don't know uh, what of, what else to say other than the caring we, culture. We can shut the show down that, right now, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if the caring culture put that, uh, put that environment in a way, uh, in, 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 the, in our facilities, it, it, it made it possible for – for people to see uh, the light of Jesus Christ in their everyday work. And many people in these care committees weren't Christian, but maybe now are because of yeah, this Yeah, that's time. fantastic. So let yeah. me ask you a question here, Brad. Um, and I know it won't, but the question is, would it surprise you if I shared some data with you from a group called Sovereign's Capital, right? Now, they've done some okay. research into yep. this idea of a correlation between human flourishing and shareholder returns. And they're only looking at public companies. And I know you guys, Columbia Forest Products is an ESOP. Many of the business owners we talk to are privately owned. But this goes to the publicly owned companies that don't have the option of accepting a possible loss in profit just to care for people. Right? right? They have to yep. show shareholder returns. So over a 10-year annualized study – 10-year annual, annualized shareholder returns. They researched 125 companies led by faith-driven CEOs. And then out of that 125, they took the most spiritually integrated companies, the top 50, and they compared those two groups with the Russell 3000 index. I won't go into a ton of other statistics, but this is mind-blowing. 10-year annualized shareholder return for the Russell Index is 13%. When you move to the 125 companies that are faith-driven CEOs during this period of time, it jumps from 13 to 19.3%. That's almost mm -hmm. a 50% increase. Right. And then when you go to the most spiritually integrated, the top of the top, that 19 jumps to 225 and a half. Now, the point here is this, I know there's eternal impact, and quite often that's the easier story to tell, but business owners want to know, well, you know, I hear, you know, Brad says they had a 75% increase in stock price, but that's one company. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's 125. Oh, no, there's this no is doubt in, in my mind. Over 10 yeah. years. Yeah, right. What we do, this, and it's not just his way at work, but it's the idea of applying a system to the company, involving the employees in the process That's correct. Right. and loving on them, changing the culture, turnover drops, direct correlation to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Hiring is easier when you've got stickiness because you've got a culture they want to come to, right? All these That's things right. add up and there's true bottom line 
results, but there's also what you mentioned, more than doubling the rate of people coming to know the Lord. When working with a chaplaincy organization, you plug our system into that and you more than double the rate. I I really, I just need to put that in an ad and, and throw it out there, right? Absolutely. I think that there's no doubt in my mind those statistics are related to um, the work of the Lord yes. to those that honor him in the workplace. And uh, uh, I, uh, it, I, I have to say that during this period of time, uh, which came out of uh, the caring committees and our work with his it we uh, developed a nonprofit called the Columbia Forest Products Foundation, mm-hmm. which took uh, donations from employees and then corporate matches. And uh, the company went from, uh, in 2001, I think the, the, the amount of uh, donations were in the neighborhood of fifty to $60,000 for a company wow. of our size. And, and then when I left, we were approaching a million dollars per year in giving. So it's... Uh, not not only uh, were we, did our stock price go up, but we were taking dollars earned by the people that own the company and helping their neighbors, yes. the communities in which they live. That's fantastic. So now you've retired. You're looking back <laughs> yeah. at this period. Yeah. How now do you measure the effectiveness of that decision or that series of decisions and, and what's going on at the company today? Well, um, so I think we should talk a little bit about how did I prepare my leaving. Um, Please. And so I think uh, it's a process in which I started fully three years, and uh, and some would say that's not long enough, depending upon uh, if you own the company or you, sure. or you don't. I didn't. Uh, but I began cultivating senior management people that were equally yoked with me mm. in terms of my uh, my beliefs and uh, uh, the, uh, the caring culture that we were developing. And, you know, I'm happy to say that uh, that transition went smoothly and uh, it was an internal candidate that uh, I believe is still working with his way at work. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the story just gets better and better at Columbia Force Products. And uh, uh, I think just the testimonies from people as I think back, you know, I got emails from employees saying, you know, th- this company has changed. It's a place where I, w- I want to come to work. And n- not only that, Chris, but we began to see a number of people from outside Columbia Forest Products mm-hmm. say, hey, h- how can I come to work for Columbia Forest Products? And, you know, I, I know things have changed uh, in the uh, employment uh, situation sure. and the environment of finding good people is probably not uh, is, is, is it's, it didn't get any better. Right. But uh, I, I think if you provide a culture where people and this is what I learned, that people can find significance in the workplace, no matter what that business is. I mean, that's right. If you you want to work at Apple Computer, that's nice, and that's you know that that would be nice. But not everybody can work there. But they all right. uh, all employers, and I think particularly those that um, love the Lord um, need to to provide that environment, and it it pays it pays back. And I, I'd, I'd leave you with one other thing: is as a, as I look back on my forty two year career, forty some year career, I don't think about all the money that was made I, I, that doesn't even you know I wish I would have we would have made more money sure. I, it's it all points to the work and to the ministry and the culture uh, and those that came to know our Savior that, that, that's, that's what I remember that's, that's I don't fantastic. remember I know it's important but that's what I remember well, I'll put it this way, Brad, and you didn't use the word, but legacy is what comes to mind. And and all of us, whether it's with our children, uh, it's maybe our work or our workplace or in some way want to leave a legacy. And and if we got our heart right and, and the Lord is in us, our legacy is not going to be all about us, but we want to make sure that the place that we are leaving, whether it's our family, our kids, our work, is better off because we were there. And it doesn't just 
fall off a cliff because now we're out. Like you said, you spent a lot of time, energy, and effort leading up to your exit so that it would continue to grow grow and climb. And I think that's That's a huge legacy. So let's – one last question here, I guess, too. Yeah. Yeah. What advice would you give today to a business owner or leader that is – way back where you were just after promise keepers they're spiritually they're a new person god is in them they're trying to figure this thing out they originally thought i've got to choose ministry or work i can't do both uh ministry or business and now obviously they're hearing otherwise what advice would you give them in these next moments for their next steps what should they be thinking about and doing well, a couple things. I think the first thing is is to join join a group of men that are equally yoked with you and and ha- are mindful uh, that they want to do something. They just don't know how to start. Mm. And uh, I would, you know, I call it the the trifecta. For me, it was the C twelve organization. It was corporate chaplains of America, and mm. it his it was his way at work. Those three organizations uh, and. Th- those evolved. I mean, we weren't ready for his way at work until a few years down the road. Sure. And uh, and I, I would say this personally, uh, the f- the first thing, and I could sit down and talk about all sorts of things that I did to f- to force myself um, to name Jesus Christ as my savior in the workplace. And that started with simple things like a Bible on my desk. Uh, the back of my business card, I put my personal testimony in terms mm. of John 8, 32. Uh, and, uh, you know, people would flip that card as I gave it to them and it would raise eyebrows, but it forced me to tell them the hope that was in me. And so you, you got to start small and eventually... Uh, you begin to think about, well, how do I take this to the next level? How do I, how, it's, it's got to start with the CEO. Yeah. Uh, but how do I take it to the next level? How do I involve people around me? And, and then use that, that team, that group that surrounds you. Uh, it's, it's almost, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember the scripture in, uh, you know, when Moses was uh, holding his, um, uh, he had uh, her and yeah, oh, holding his arms up yeah, in the battle. Holding, holding his arms up, and every time uh, his arms went up, uh, I think Joshua was winning the battle against Amalek. And when they fell, the opposite was happening. You right. got to have men to you got men and women to support you as you do those things. And so you need to find a small group around you to help you. Sure, um, and then just start have uh, have courage. And the Lord will bless that. Yeah, and and multiply it, right? Because that's the, it. Yeah. the things I've heard you say before is you were a an instrument. You didn't create all this impact yourself. No. You just you said yes, and He used that yes. That's right. That's right. That's great. Well, let me ask you this. We'll close out with a couple of quick fire questions, Brad. Is there yeah. a resource, a book, or a podcast? other than this one, obviously, uh, that you would recommend to someone that's just had an impact on you, something that's, uh, you know, could be from the last year or two or three of, of retirement or even go years back? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening to something now that is, oh, gosh. You know, I, I, many, of, many of the people may know Buck Jacobs, um, mm. founder of C12, but let, let me, let me uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, it's a it's a profound um, it's uh, a daring a daring faith in a cowardly world. It's by Ken Harrison. It's a brand new book, and it's um, it's worth the read. And so Very it good. speaks right to this idea of having a daring faith and having the courage to to, to do something step about. out. That's yeah, great. We'll put that about. book yeah. in the show notes. And you mentioned yeah. earlier in the show that uh, we could put some contact out for uh, Columbia Absolutely. Forest products if somebody wants to reach Absolutely. out there. Is And we'll yeah. also have His Way at Work listed there as well. So sure. you've given much advice here, uh, and I'm not going to ask you for another piece of advice, but if you had to, if you had to summarize 
today's, we've been together about 35 minutes. If you had to summarize that time, what's the one big takeaway that you would want someone listening, if they got nothing else, take this away with them? Um, well, <laughs> so I, I think I, I'll, ref, I'll go to Acts uh, 6, uh, verse 4, devote yourself to prayer and to being in the Word of God. Devote yourself to prayer, and He will guide you uh, through, uh, through this, this time of developing a workplace ministry. Chris, I got to say, I didn't know how this thing was going to go, and uh, just a flood of memories came, and I know that's the that's the Lord uh, yes. telling telling me, Brad, say this, and uh, uh, it's not it's it's uh, uh, you know CEOs have a they have a role that uh, is is difficult, and uh, so the advice again is be be in prayer and be in His Word, and that's uh, solid. That's that's solid. And that's sounds right. simple, that's but it is anything but easy. <laughs> Very difficult. Oh, yes, it tell is. me I about it. it. I get yeah. it. Personally yeah. convicted on that. Well, thank you, Brad. It's been a fantastic show, and I I yeah. sincerely mean this. You are uh, someone who has left a legacy at Columbia Forest Products that continues to grow, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I appreciate right. all that you've done, not only in that business, but. Even since you've retired, I know you've been involved in quite a bit. Sorry we didn't get yeah. into all that, but uh, look forward right. to having another conversation with you another day. All right, but thank Chris. you for your hey, time Chris. today. Yeah, You have a great one. Thank you, Chris. Nice to see you again. You too. Thank you for listening to another episode of Eternal ROI. If you like what you heard, we would love for you to take a moment and leave us a review and share an episode with somebody you know. If you are inspired to begin bringing the power of God's love into your workplace, take a moment and check out our free assessment at hwaw.com. It'll only take you a few moments. It'll give you a snapshot of what your company looks like and maybe some ways to move forward. Just click on the link in the show notes and we'll see you next time.